Imagine employing people to protect you, only for those people to turn around and kill you, all because you have too much money. This is the unfortunate story of Adiza Latana Obo. Adiza was the first Nigerian Airways female pilot during the 80s and 90s. She was a trailblazer and she was adored within and outside the country. She would go on to be the first and only female pilot of Nigerian Airways. It's not as if those things still exist now. Just like her fame and job, her bank account was overflowing with money. Long before she turned 30, she already owned her own house in Ikoi, Lagos. It was said to be a very big house, a mansion. But the problem was, Adiza lived alone. She wasn't married and she didn't have any kids and it wasn't stated that she lived with her relations or family members. However, she had employees. A gateman by the name of Abdullahi and a substitute gateman who doubled as a gardener and also an electrician by the name of Peter. She had a driver by the name of Itoro Akban. So these were mostly the people she left a house for. Although the relationship between her and these workers is a little complicated and I will explain as we go further. Adiza was known to travel a lot. She traveled a lot. Sometimes she would be gone for days, weeks and even months without even returning to her house. It was the nature of her job. But she left her house in the hands of her employees till whenever she got back. That is how it has always been for her for only God knows how long. However, on the 8th of February 1998, Adiza returned from a month-long journey. And when she came back, her gateman, Abdullahi, helped her carry her luggage up to her room. Now, it was said that this is the first time Abdullahi was entering into her room. And when he entered into her room, you know, he saw a whole lot of things. He saw dollars, pounds. According to him, he saw monies of different currencies laying around the woman's bedroom. He also saw jewelries and designer clothes. Even after he left the room back to his Gateman house quarter, he didn't stop thinking about all the valuables that he saw in this woman's bedroom. Now, just for clarity, the murder of Adiza is recorded to be on the 8th of February. Even though it would take about months before people realized she had been killed then, it is still unclear to know the time frame between when Abdullahi saw these jewelries and valuables in her room to when she was killed. It might have been that Abdullahi had seen these jewelries and then planned within weeks or days on how to, you know, do what he wanted to do. But according to the story, it kind of came off as though that it was the same day that Adiza returned that Abdullahi saw the jewelries and it was still that same day that Abdullahi and a group of other people killed Hadiza. Now if that is actually true, it is actually possible that these people had planned her death long before Abdullahi even saw those jewelries. Even though in court, Abdullahi said that it was because of those jewelries that he did what he did. Now for more clarity, and I think this is where Adiza might have messed up, Abdullahi had been fired before. He wasn't even supposed to be there when she came back. Abdullahi was Adiza's first gate man and throughout the course of him working for her, at a particular time she fired him. It is unclear why she fired him but looking back now, I guess she must have seen that this guy was not a good person. I guess she must have seen that this man is capable of some of the most evil things in the world and maybe that was why she fired him in the first place. And I've done a video on this, how the people who are close to us tend to be the one who hurt us. And I've said this before, most times these people show us who they are right before they attack us. And I think that was the case with Adiza and Abdullahi. Abdullahi had shown Adiza who he was and Adiza had seen it and decided to fire him because she didn't want any part of that. She didn't want that kind of a man working for her anymore and that was why she fired him. And when Abdullahi was fired, Adiza hired another man called Peter to play the gate man and also do some gardening and electrician work in the house. So Peter was a new gate man, Abdullahi is gone with the wind. However, days before Adiza was set to go on a trip, like this month's trip that she just returned from, Peter told her that he had to go to his village and see his family, something like he was resigning or so. So this saddened Adiza who was like to Peter thinking that he was going to be there to look after the house while she went away. But Clearly, Peter had other plans and so when Peter left, Adiza decided to rehire Abdullahi. A decision that I guess we can now say was not the best. So when Abdullahi came back to the house, 
he got his job back and Adiza left for her trip. On the 8th of February, she came back and apparently from then onwards it was almost as if Abdullahi had planned this long before she even came back. Again like I said it's unclear if it was the same day she returned that she was killed but you know on the day she was killed it was said that Adiza had gone to her kitchen to prepare dinner. While she was in her house preparing dinner and moving about arranging her stuff, Abdullahi was busy opening the gate for the two other accomplices that were in this plan to kill Adiza with him. But Abdullahi would go on to do the killing because he would go to Adiza's backyard to wait for her as she was in the kitchen cooking. Cooking a food that she wouldn't even test, it was said that Abdullahi attacked her from behind with a rope, choking her and strangling her. It was said that Adiza tried to put on a fight to see how she can get away from this. It was also said that she begged, but you know, apparently Abdullahi's mind was made up. He really wanted to kill this woman and that was what he did. After a long scuffle and struggle that even included blood and scratching and injuries, Adiza gave up the ghost and died right there in the kitchen. After she had died, Abdullahi called his two accomplices that turned out to be Peter and Itoro, the substitute gateman and the driver. Those were the two people that Abdullahi had planned with to kill Adiza in order for them to take over all her properties. Saying that she doesn't have a husband, saying that she doesn't have children, saying that her family are rarely around the properties. So I guess this was what gave them the mind and courage to decide to take this woman's life. Together these three people took Adiza's body to the septic tank in the compound where they tossed it in and then cemented over the septic tank. After they had buried Adiza in the septic tank, they all moved into Adiza's house and begun to see how they were going to share these properties amongst them. They began to move the properties. I mean, Ituro was the driver. He was the one moving properties, chairs, valuables, all the clothes, all the good stuff in the house. They began to move it, looking for buyers and looking for people they would sell them to and keep the money. Itoro himself, who was a driver, began to use Adiza's vehicle as a taxi in the streets of Lagos. And while all this was happening, while these people were selling Adiza's properties, Adiza's friends and families and colleagues were coming to visit her and when they come to the gates, they would knock and Abdullahi would answer and tell them that my madam is not around, she travelled. And of course, these guests would listen because they know that Adiza was always traveling so whenever Abdullahi would tell them that Adiza had traveled the guests would go however there was one particular man who was not comfortable who had his suspicion this was Adiza's next door neighbor next compound neighbor who happened to also be a police officer who was also on duty so this man from his compound used to see how these guys were moving Adiza's properties it wasn't as though he was in talking terms with Adiza maybe they were just hi hello how are you doing but when he saw this supposed gate man and gardener and driver moving Adiza's properties from a house from his compound he decided to go and check and when he went there he asked them where is your madam and they told him the same thing our madam don't travel but this man was like you can't fool me i'm not i'm not stupid instantly this man called for backup he mobilized policemen and they came to Adiza's house, arrested Peter and Itoro with someone who had also come to buy a property of Adiza's. So these three people were arrested. But Abdullahi was not arrested, he was on the run, I guess. So when they took Peter and uh, Itoro with the other guy to the police station, at first the police treated this case as a theft case. They were being charged for stealing and probably robbery I guess. So at this time they did not know that Adiza was dead because Peter told them that Adiza had traveled and this was 1998 there was no GSM phone or Facebook or social media to check so they believed Peter because they knew that Adiza was in the nature of traveling. So while they were treating it as a theft case the police were launching a manhunt for Abdullahi who was supposed to be the mastermind of this theft crime that these people are being accused of. At the same time, the family of Adiza's were raising eyebrows and wondering, it's like, what's going on? One month has passed, Adiza had not returned. Two months has passed, Adiza had not returned. Three months has passed and Adiza had still not returned. It was at this point that they were like, you know what, 
there is something not adding up. I mean, Ajiza travels for months, but this isn't adding up. Even the people she worked for, the airport she worked for, were also looking for her. So the police were like, if the airline she works for are also looking for her, what does this mean? If she had traveled, wouldn't she have told them? Wouldn't they have known? It was at this point that the police decided to take a second look at Ajiza's house. I mean, they've been there the first time, but they really just thought it was property theft. They didn't think too much of it. But when they went the second time, they did a thorough search throughout the house. They went to the kitchen for the first time all through their search. That was when they saw the rope that had been used to strangle Adiza. The food Adiza was cooking before she left. The air condition in her room has dried out. Everything was filled with cobwebs. Even blood stains were found on the floors of the kitchen. So it was at this point that the police knew that, okay, this is more than just a theft case. And upon searching the compound, the policemen stumbled upon the septic tank and they noticed something was odd. It looked like it had been newly cemented as compared to the other parts of the body of the septic tank. And yes, this was where the police was like, let's check this place. This looks recent. I mean, who would have done this? Adiza had been gone for months. So who did this and what is inside? It looks like they were trying to cover up something. And just like that, they broke into the septic tank and saw the decomposing body of Adiza Latana Obo. The body was recovered. And at this point, the story has changed. These people who were arrested for theft, their charges has now moved to murder. Also at this point, Abdullahi had also been caught and arrested for theft. So he too was also has been, you know, promoted to a murder charge. Soon all four of them were arraigned in court. While they were in court, they pleaded their case and the case was set to go on trial. But somehow, as the police were trying to figure out their next move on how to handle this case, the police got the news that the judge in the court has granted bail to these four culprits. And it was like, what is happening? When Nigerians heard the news that these four people who had killed Adiza had been granted bail, they were like, okay, this is a joke. What is this? What is going on? A lot of Nigerians were calling for them to be rearrested, and the Minister of Justice at the time heard the cries of Nigerians and told the police to rearrest this man. Now, when these men were granted bail, they had trustees, they had referees who came to sign on their behalf. So that was kind of why they were let go because they had people who had come to sign on their behalf, those trustees or shorties or, you know, referees, people who had come to stand in for them, for their bail. They also even paid the bail money. So it was like, okay, okay, you can go now, but once the trial starts, you guys have to show up. So that was kind of like the plan for the judges. But now that the Minister of Justice began to call for the rearrest of this man, the police had to go through this shorties document and they had to go through the address that was signed their names and their workplace only for them to discover that these shorties had lied the names address workplace that these trustees or shorties had written and signed in the document did not exist and that my friend was how the four killers of adiza latsana obo got away up to this day, the killers of Adiza Latana had not been found. They all ran away, including the shorties that no one knows their names. It has been over 24 years and Adiza Latana has still not gotten the justice that she deserved. Justice was so close, so close, yet due to the carelessness of the system in place at the time, these killers got away and from the looks of things it seems like they have gotten away with murder forever this is the unfortunate tragedy of adiza latana obo one of those cases that we are still hoping that one day justice would prevail no matter how long it takes so thank you guys for watching and i would like to hear your thoughts on this case do you think that adiza would ever get justice and what are your thoughts on the fact that adiza lived alone and wasn't married because a lot of people who are familiar with this story blamed it on the fact that she was single a lot of people are saying if she was married and had a family this would never have happened i want to know what you guys think about that do you think that is true or do you think regardless it could have still happened 
Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Don't forget to like and share this story with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do well to subscribe and turn on your notification button so whenever there is a new video, you will be the first to know. Thank you.